Data Management Console. Um, Sid, if you want to also give a brief intro about yourself, that would be great. And then feel free to take it over. Hi, I'm Sid. Uh, I'm the Chair for Sick Graphics um, and Audio. Uh, and I'm a senior software engineer with Amazon. And I can stop sharing. My screen. Can you guys see this? We sure can. We can. Okay, yep. cool. Um, so I'll, I'm just going to be demoing Share Management Console. Um, so I'll, I'll go a little bit technical, as much as I'm allowed to, because this is a kind of a technical topic. Um, this is relevant for anybody who is building a game that is GPU bound, um, and you can tell that by looking at your GPU profiler and seeing if that is the reason why your game is running. So let's say your game, if you want to hit the 60 frame rate target and you're running at 40, you can take a look at GPU profiler and see if your GPU, uh, that is taking up all your time. So and if Sid, it is, yeah. Can you explain uh, kind of what the shader management console is yeah. kind of, and, its, and its reason for being? Yeah, that that is sort of, sort of getting, to, getting to that. So if you're GPU bound, usually it's because your one of the patch is taking too long. And and in order to address that, you will let you build shaders that are optimal. Um, so that's the origination story for Shader Imagine Console. So if you have your shaders that sort of look like, so this is a shader, and usually with the shaders, you have branches. So here's a branch, it says if something, and there's a bunch of code in here that your GPU runs. Uh, we wanted to provide, and this is a very standard problem across all game engines. You usually your forward path has an Uber shader that has a lot of features. You have feature, let's say one, two, three, four, five, six, all the way till 10, but you know your mesh only uses feature three and four. So you usually you're paying the cost of all the features unless you remove that uh, from your shader when you submit that work to the GPU. Shader Manager Console lets you do that. It lets you essentially disable features so that when that mesh gets sent to the GPU for rendering, it will use a much more optimized shader variant where the features where it doesn't impact it are removed. How do we do that? Without going into too much technical detail, you essentially build your shaders as you normally do, and you introduce these shader options like this. So anything that has O underscore enabled is a shader option. Um, and then, you open up Shader Management Console, which should be in your profile directory. Uh, so you want to run your asset processor first, then you double click your Shader Management Console, and it kind of looks like this. So this Shader Management Console, you have the asset browser at the bottom, and this area at the top that's open. So you can take any shader and build a variant list out of that. And every variant list looks for, I've already created one for our forward path, and this is what a variant list, list looks like. It essentially shows all the shader options, you know, like O underscore enable, that this is a shader option. Every column is a shader option. So it'll show you all the shader options and it has a value associated with that. Um, if it has this icon, that means it's dynamic. If it has the actual value, then it's static. For each of this row, it will actually build a shader variant. So, so if there, there's 13 rows there, so for this shader, which is base PVR underscore mobile pipeline, it's going to build out 13 variants. Each one of this variant will have these values for these shader options. So it'll have false for the O underscore block silhouette, uh, true for this. And then in that shader, if it's false, that means that that feature is gone. So if you open up that shader variant, number one, the, anything that has false, anything that has uh, multiply, it will only keep the, the that property for that shader option. And everything else is just completely eliminated. So that means your GPU is not paying the cost for that other stuff. So if block silhouette is false, that means that whole feature is gone, which is which means that your GPU can run, uh, uh, it increases, without going to too much, it increases parallelism for the GPU. It actually is able to generate much more threads and it can uh, finish that pass much more quickly because it can uh, go through way more pixels at a, at a given time. Um, so how do you build this? So you can really, uh, in the asset browser, if you want to create a new shader variant list, you'll pick the shader that you want to target. So in this case, let's say, uh, I want to target base PBR uh, mobile 
pipeline. Um, so this is a shader. I can click it. I can right click it. And I can actually, oh, okay. So there's two types of shader options. There's the material shader options and there's non-material shader options, which in this case, we call them system shader options. Material shader options are basically um, values that you set when you create the material. So in the editor, when you create a material, we know exactly what that material does. We know that this material, let's say, doesn't use a roughness texture. We know it doesn't use a metallic texture because that's what the artist decided when it built those, built that material. So we already know those values. So we can immediately crawl your material uh, file and build uh, a variant list from it. So that part is easy. We actually have, um, uh, it's called under Python scripts. You can run a Python script and, and it will generate this variant list just based off of material shader options. So that part is easy. Just run the Python script and it'll just build it. So you're good to go there. The hard part is, is the non-material shader options. And we've done a lot of work to make that more feasible. Uh, non-material shader options are basically like, imagine if you will, you have your Uber shader that can do disk lights, point lights, uh, capsule lights, but you know your mesh, your level only has one type of light, which is let's say it's the disk light. So then why are you paying the cost for all the other ones? It's not an it's not a material shader option, so it will not get captured in this variant list. So you can add them yourself. So you can literally go right click Python variants, expand options, full combinatorial stuff, Python. And what it does is shows you all the shader options that were not material. So you can actually click on one, bring it across. So this is where you go into the whole conversation about managing your variants, because this can blow up pretty fast. Because imagine if you will, you already have 13 shader variants, and if you bring over a bunch of these, it actually will start blowing up. Because for each one of this, multiplied by two of this, if it's a Boolean, if it's an enum, times by another four. So it can go from manageable variants, which is in this case 20 in the 20s, it can go all the way up to thousands hundreds of thousands. If, if I bring over all of these shader options and bring that across, it actually will generate, it'll actually show you. So we added a whole bunch of features to help you manage that. It'll, it's showing you your variation generation count, your final variation count is 45. So if I keep bringing in more, it jumps up to 141, um, 269. So it can get really complex. So what we've added is we've added a whole bunch of tools to help you manage your variance. One of the tools we added was this thing called cost impact analysis. So the easy SLC compiler will analyze the shader and it will tell you which what is the cost associated with each of these shader options. Actually, it doesn't work right now in this demo because I didn't have time to get it uh, to point to the right easy SLC, but it'll tell you the cost for this feature. It'll tell you the cost for this feature once it works. Um, and well, how it does it, it approximates it. It looks at your ALE calculations, figures out how many doubles and halves, float fours, back fours, and it'll tell you like, hey, this one takes 100 or 200, and it comes up with a value. So it lets you decide which shader options will have the biggest impact. Then when you want to manage your actual number of variants, it'll give you, it'll help you sort them, sort this based off of analyzed costs. It'll tell you, hey, block still helps have the biggest impact. Then when you bring it over, it'll tell you exactly how many variants you're generating. Then you can actually give it a target. So let's say it goes in 10,000. So if you give it a target of let's say 100, it will it will automatically decide the best 100. So the most best 100 variants that'll have the biggest impact. So it has all these tools that are built in that'll help you manage your variant, uh, number of variants that you can build. Because obviously you wanna build the most amount of variants, but then you run into well, you're using up space. If it's a mobile game, you know, 100 megs, anything above 100 megs to 200 megs, you don't want to go to that in that range because that can have impact on how big your your game gets on disk. Um, yeah, so there's there's a lot to discuss here, and uh, this is sort of a high level demo. So, so this is how it is. So you can actually build it once the variant list is built. Your asset processor will will you will grab it and it will build a variant, and then at runtime you can set these values and it'll pick the correct variant. So it has all the logic in here. Relative. If you pass in block silhouette with false, true, light, false, it will pick this 12 variant and it's the most optimized variant for that, uh, for the forward pass. And then the idea is that your forward pass will go down in, in, in the, the time it takes and your GPU will run much faster.
Cool. Sorry if, if I got too technical or didn't get too technical. This is the time. If you have any questions related to this, uh, uh, please let me know. We are uh, working on putting documentation for this work. There is some documentation already in the wiki pages, but the idea is that we want to, this stuff is a little bit more uh, uh, low level rendering gear. So we want to put a documentation for a content developer who is not as uh, comfortable uh, being this low. So the, the idea is that they can just easily go in, press press these few buttons and they can build your basic variant list. And then to expand that variant list, uh, you can do that as well uh, if you know what you're doing. So it'll, 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 it'll It'll provide a basic one for yourself by default. And then if you want to get more uh, specific, you can do that. And the tools are there to, for you to do that. So we did that for a multiplayer NPS level and for the loft scene, because they're both usually once you build a really polished product, you end up being GPU bound. So you, we have to build this variant. If you are GPU bound and you, it's the reason why is because you don't have a variant list. You don't have a variant list your forward pass is taking a long time and that's why you're not getting good frame rate. And you'll see that in the Discord channel, a lot of people will say, hey, my performance is really bad. And one of the biggest reasons why is because they haven't built shader variants. So they're using the worst shader possible, which is the root shader. And, and that will give you horrible performance. Question. Oh, oh Sid, yeah. uh, this is Adi. Uh, first oh, of hi. all, Amazing. Uh, I mean, we've been talking about a tool like this for so long, and the fact that it's now here, it's it's simply amazing. Uh, so kudos for that. Um, the question is, um, does it have uh, self-coverage over existing um, resources according to which it can do some smart operations, such as filtering the most used or creating the variant list for you, and on top of this, adding your own choices, etc.? Yeah, the, the, the tools that we've added is um, one, the, one of the biggest tools that we added was this cost analysis, static analysis. So your easy SLC will analyze your shader and it will give you a uh, provide a cost per shader option. This is obviously an approximation. It doesn't understand the complexities of a GPU. All it knows is that this feels like it covers the most uh, it has. It, if your shader is 100%, it'll tell you, hey, this is using 50% of the shader. It's literally this feature. So that's one analysis tool that we've added. Another one we've added is actually generation of variants itself. So it will figure out uh, which variants do the most amount of coverage. And based on that, it's actually right here. Uh, if you bring it over, it'll tell you, oh, I guess some of this stuff is not fully there yet because this is I'm working on it for branch, but it will tell you, the, uh, hey, you you have you built 21 variants, and those 21 variants have covered 90% uh, of the possible options that you could have covered. Um, so let's say 100% means 10,000 variants. Well, you don't want to build 10,000 variants because that's absurd. So it will tell you, hey, if you build some of these shader options will cover can get you up to 80%. And and eighty percent may be good enough because that just means that if you pick, you're not picking the worst one; you're picking the second worst. Uh, so you'll have a few dynamic branches, but that should be okay. Did that sort of so, cover your question? Answer your question. So yes, mostly, but I, it does open two different channels. One of them is uh, a lot of the performance goes on, uh, you know, uh, especially PBR, etc., on uh, register mm -hmm. pressure, and so yeah. we need yeah. to associate that in some way, and that would be really, and it's hard to do just by looking at, uh, you know, the shader options, because they add it together, and at some point, boom, you explode, and this is where the warp split, and all of that happens. Yeah, so we kind of are kind of going through that, so the register pressure that you mentioned, so imagine if you have a feature like, um, so we added this, uh, one of this one recently, is called directional shadow filtering method. So essentially there's different ways to filter shadow maps. Um, it doesn't work. Um, there's PCF, ESM, PCF, ESM together. So you know, if you know uh, for your content, you only care about PCF, then you can actually just put this, because this is a norm. So material shader options are covered automatically because material shader options you know exactly what the value is because they're coming from the material file. 
the problem, the, this becomes only an issue for non-material shader options. And that's where, uh, if you are an engineer, you know what you're doing, you know your content only, you only care about PCF, you can actually bring the shader option yourself. You can tell it, hey, these are the enum values that I care about. And then you can add that in. So your, all of these variant lists will get times it by, let's say you pick two, uh, let's say you pick just one PCF, so let's just one, so it will just, add the shader option in here and it'll multiply that. So you can append it or multiply it. So there's two options there. So you can multiply it with the with the PCF or, and PCF ESM, and then that will automatically get handled. Then that would mean that uh, for the fourth option that you may have gets completely removed. All the register usage registers for that option will get removed. ALUs will get removed. So that will help with both register pressure as well as the amount of work that a GPU, well, actually in this case, it will just help with the register pressure because it won't do that work anyways because um, it's not ever gonna pick that option. But yeah, so this will help with the register pressure. So as long as you build your shader option smartly and accurately, you'll, uh, you'll, it'll significantly help with reducing the number of registers you needed for your, for your shader. Um, um, so last question about this tool. Is there any automatic registration? You mentioned material and specifically material, you have the assets. Is there any auto scan of the directory that will help you build automatically the shader options that already exist and we know about them? So materials, it will automatically pick them up and add the values. Non-materials, it will pick them up here, but you have to add them yourself manually because that's dependent on your content and your pipeline that you're using. So a lot of this is like, if I'm building a mobile pipeline, I don't care about disk lights because mobile pipeline doesn't even have disk light support. So it, so you as a, as, a, as a developer needs to understand, so non-materials are the part where you have to sort of take ownership and build them up yourself. The materials that are options all handle automatically for you, but you have to actually run it. You still have to run it. It's not, it doesn't come with the engine automatically because it lives in your project folder. So your, if for your project, you have to run this Python script and it'll build that material share option. On our material, you'll have to build them up yourself based on your content. So if I'm building, if I have a mobile build, I'm going to pull in only the share options that make sense for my mobile pipeline. Okay, that's amazing. Thanks, Sid. So Adi, uh, for your uh, question, it sounded like you were hoping for a future feature where it can make a kind of rough estimate of your register usage and display that? Uh, am I correct in my interpretation the, there? By the way, there is a tool that does this, uh, I think AMD, and we have integration of that tool. We just haven't, it's not integrated really nicely into this SMT yet, but th there are tools that exist that do this, by the way, Joe, that will tell you the exact register used by your, by our shader and, and i think it'd be nice to have that displayed here yes and right next to this row it should yeah. say hey this variant uses this many registers this variant we obviously uh, by the way and this before i mentioned this is a lot of effort has gone into this tool by many many engineers so thanks to you know silicon studio uh, vivian and all the atom engineers uh this is a complex tool and and yeah so and yeah. and it needs and it it needs more work. We've done a lot of work to polish it, like stable IDs. You can remove variants, you can add variants, but obviously, just like any other tool, there are bugs and it needs uh, and features that so, we would like to add. My recommendation, uh, Adi, if there isn't already a uh, GitHub issue, just add a feature request GitHub issue uh, for what you were looking for for the you know displaying of registry usage. Yeah, I, I think that's great. Such a tool can be such an asset to a production, adding register pressure, uh, the scanning, the ability to, to do all of that, maybe even to run over production, both models and material and gather all the shader tools. All of this is, I think it leads to a great tool in the future. Yeah, this is a very, very complex uh, space managing shader permutations. And I think this is our attempt at solving that problem. There, it's one of those problems that there's no one solution um, and, and whatever solution you have will always have some drawbacks. So we're trying to provide all the tools so that it can address uh, as much content out there as possible. Uh, yeah. So the, the only thing that's missing is this, this knowledge. Um, this, so we're trying to work on creating documents and videos 
to make sure that people understand this exists. This is how you would build your variants and this is how you would handle performance related issues, especially if it's GPU bound. And that's it from me. Um, if nothing, then I can stop sharing. Thank you. Thank you, Sid. Are there any more questions for Sid or Joe or TJ? We're moving into our question and answer section of the call. And feel free to, you know, come off mute, throw your questions in the chat. Actually, I have a... oh, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, quick question on the shader management console. In terms of, let's say, uh, features that are already in place, are there a is there something still in the works or you you know we can say that the tool is basically ready right now if I get the latest the, version? So um, we are actually in the process of updating the AZS. So you need the latest version of AZSLT, which may not make it to the point release, but it will be in the development soon. Um, and you only need that for the cost, you know, the static analysis cost feature of that SMT, mm -hmm. you'll need it. You need the latest AZSLT. The tool is at a point where we can now release content for like a, like a game because it lets you now build as detailed variants as as many variants as possible as long as you understand what you're doing. Uh, before you could only build variants using only for material shader options and and even that was kind of flaky. You had to run it all through command line and stuff. Now it's all works. The tool is very stable. It doesn't crash anymore. You can delete, you can add variants manually if you want. You can now add non-material shader options and it's uh, it's not an additive, it's a multiplicative. That means that it doesn't just append at the bottom because if you just append, that means you're still picking a very unoptimized shader variant, it actually multiplies in. So more variants, but still it, it, it builds. The only thing that is missing that I would like to see, one thing that actually uh, Andy brought up is register usage per variant. Second, I would love, love, love to see is a tree, as a shader variant tree visualization. Uh, it's really hard to visualize the variant tree by just looking at the rows. Uh, you'll have to sort of go through and see um, in your head and understand what each option is. And so it's really hard to visualize the tree of all the shader options. So if, you're, if a shader has 10 shader options, then I wanna be able to see, hey, based on my 200 variants, what is my shader variant tree looks like? And that way I can optimize that in a much more uh, impactful way. Uh, so that that feature is missing, but it's a, obviously not a trivial feature to add, but that would be nice to see. Yeah. Now that you mentioned ACSLC version, uh, is there a still a requirement for a special permission to release a package for the third party folder or that's so already taken we, care of? We added support for anybody external to create their own packages. So you can use 3P or Jenkins. So once you update the script, GitHub should automatically build a new package and put it in a bucket. And then you can then just update the hash. So that whole process is streamlined uh, significantly. So anybody can can create a new package uh, using using uh, GitHub. And 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 then okay. and, and create a new three P package and 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 just update the hash in the development for that. Oh, nice. Good to know. Thank yeah. you. So uh, to clarify two things: one is this will not be in the point release uh, because it's far outside uh, the tenets of what the point release was for, uh, but it will be in development. And secondly, mm -hmm. this tool is actually being used by a company to create a game. Uh, so it is being put through its paces. Excellent. Perfect. Thanks for clarifying, Joe. Um, I also want to point out that RZD Myth had a question in the chat. I'm not sure, Sid, if you answered that earlier, but it sounds like it is to you. Um, it will have a similar feature to SQL Profiler. In this case, it can give warnings about the list performance assets, allowing the professional to create the shaders. Um, SQL profile. Actually, I've never used an SQL profiler, but yeah, it 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 won't give you warnings um, at least at one time. So uh, that would be nice. I think a, a nice feature to add at one time. This is not for the tool, but for one time, is that we should be able to select a mesh 
and it should be able to tell me which variant it's using. And that will give me a really good idea of like, hey, is it picking? Because it's really hard to tell. You can build thousands of variants, but then you, what happens if, if your GPU performance didn't go down? What happened? Is it, where is the, how do you debug this? Because it's such a complicated, like, did you not build the, the right variant? Did the right variant not get selected? Where Where is the disconnect here? And I think a good tool here uh, would be to be able to select uh, a mesh that, that you're using in your scene, and then it'd be able to tell you statistics about the variant that it's using for the, at least for the forward path, because in this case, forward path is always the most, uh, uh, the, the bottleneck here. Uh, so it won't be as easy as like, hey, here's some warnings in your output log because you have so much content in your scene. So you can't, you don't want to just dump about the whole thing. You just want to select certain things that you think, uh, uh, isolate where the issue is, which content, which part of the content, and then just focus on that. That would be a nice feature to have. All right. Good Thank question. You. Uh, since this um, tool does not is not included in the release, is it pretty much standalone that you can just Sorry. go to the tools? The the tool is in the release, so just they it's just not have the latest of the latest features. So the whole cost impact analysis that we do that gives you a cost per shader option that may not be included. Um, maybe it has a few. We added a whole bunch of fixes and polishing around it, so maybe that may not be included. You can, um, it's the actual, um, but, but the tool is there. SMC has always been there from the first O2D release. SMC is a really old tool that we have been building. It just was never as um, polished and never, wasn't complete. Um, before it would only let you just build variant list from, uh, from the material shader options and everything else had to be manual. So people were just using the JSON file and manually adding it. So there is the SMC exists in the latest point release. It may not be exactly with all the, uh, all the features may not work perfectly just the way I'm describing it. But yes, uh, it will be there, but grab the development branch and it will work perfectly in the development branch. Okay, so, so let's say that it. I don't have the development branch since, you know, many companies work on their own branches. Yeah, uh, yep. How How, uh, standalone is it? Can I just go to the tools, copy it, yeah. and then bring it over to a project, or does it depend uh, on the code? The, the, you can bring over the tool, uh, so it's pretty standalone because all it's really doing is it's just parsing JSON files and creating more JSON okay. files. So it's pretty, Great. pretty. The thing that the only thing that you need the new is the latest AZSLC is for the static analysis. So that we're building the 3P package as we speak for that. Okay, thanks, Sid. Really amazing.